Video gaming has a history, and we've attempted to categorize that history by creating console generations based on their time on the shelf at retail, and I don't like it. When was it released? Which generation is it from? What other consoles was it up against when it was at the store? Is that it? Scientists have created a hierarchy to classify biological organisms. And for video game consoles, we came up with this. Although it isn't complete, this rough chart gives you an idea of how video game consoles are grouped by generation. Pause the video for a closer look. Notice the years that define the time span of each generation. The overlap is ridiculous. The third generation Famicom was sold until 2003, so this means the entire third generation of consoles spans 20 years? That doesn't make sense. Does any part of you think 2003 when you see this group? And if the ending year of a generation is defined by the longest selling console from it, isn't the Sega Master System still sold in Brazil? The traits that allegedly separate two generations from one another are far from definitive. Take the fourth and fifth generations, for example. The optical disc is cited as one trait that separates the fifth generation from the fourth, yet the cartridge-based Nintendo 64 is a major part of it. Meanwhile, the fourth gen already made use of optical discs thanks to devices like the Sega CD, for example. This defining characteristic of the fifth gen doesn't separate it from the fourth gen at all. I can't put a finger on when the generations were defined and by whom. Honestly, I didn't think about any of this until Wikipedia came along. Suddenly we'd classified everything and the results feel like a last minute homework assignment. When someone says the third generation of video game consoles, I have to look it up. All right, yeah, okay, third gen, got it, and now I can move on. Why not name them instead of number them? A grouping should have an identity, a name, to set it apart and not be a counting exercise. Let's move away from the specifics and look at the big picture. Who do these classifications serve anyway? Why do we need them? Do gamers need generations defined for old systems? No, they couldn't care less, they just want to play the game. Okay. What about those that are interested in game history, hardware, content creation, social norms during a system's lifespan, and software development? Do they need classification? Generations help the social group the most. Those that would want to perhaps examine Sega's marketing approach of using characters with attitude in print and video in the early 90s. A console's time span at retail is relevant to this as it's a parallel to culture at the time. Historians find generations helpful as the development of hardware and a system's release timeline is relevant to the competition at launch. However, this is just a rough grouping and not a release timeline. And why just a loose range of release dates? Shouldn't the hardware and software be more involved? Think about this a moment. If we look at the generations of people as used by the Americas, for example, they are grouped by birth date ranges and have experienced the same life events, changes in technology and more during the same rough time period. Consoles don't work that way. They don't grow up. Their hardware is selected, the system is built, and the architecture doesn't change. Yes, expansion hardware and programming techniques push the envelope, but that is on a per-system basis and not a per-generation basis. This in mind, the Famicom of 1983 is not the same as the Famicom of 1993, is it? The base system hardware hasn't changed, but the games have. Game evolution that occurs inside a console's lifespan is just as important as the jump to the next generation hardware. Is this parallel to growing up found in this listing of consoles by generation? No. So now what? Subgenerations based on software evolution, perhaps? You could separate each console's software release timeline into parts, perhaps even using milestone titles as a method of division. Obviously, this would be unique per console. Games should have a greater meaning if we classify based on time. Software evolution should be relevant. Handhelds are included in these generations as a footnote. It seems that consoles drive the generational divide and the handheld consoles manage to be thrown in thanks to the date ranges. If handhelds can be integrated with the consoles, why stop there? What about arcade games? Are they too difficult to integrate thanks to the variety of their hardware? Now wait a minute, these generations are just rough groups based on years of competition and don't have much to do with the hardware itself. It should be easy to integrate arcade games. Not true, you say? Hardware is relevant and consistent in this list? I suppose you may also state that the fourth generation is also called the 16-bit generation. Well, why not just call it that then? because 8-bit handhelds are shoehorned into it. And speaking of shoehorning in arcades, hey look, the Neo Geo, a Trojan horse of arcade games in the home, a system with all kinds of bits. Where should it go? Uh, here. 
Ask a gamer to classify consoles based on bits, and here is the response. Ask them to define what bits are in relation to hardware architecture, and they have no clue. It is all based on marketing, and you could produce this chart by referencing a stack of Toys R Us ads. Computers are missing. Why? They have games. Maybe the genres are too different between the platforms? That can't be it. If you want proof, take a look at the MSX and the Sharp X68000. There is significant console, computer, and arcade overlap here. The Famicom is obviously a game console, so it, wait, Famicom, as in family computer, and by the way, it also has a keyboard and you can program in BASIC with it. The family computer is not a computer, it's a console. Is that what we're saying? Maybe it is about quantity of games for a platform. Well, that's not it. The Commodore 64 has a number of games somewhere in the thousands. I don't know how many there are. In fact, I think we're still counting them. Nowadays, modern consoles are closer to computers than they've ever been. However, we toss in handhelds but throw out computers. The Philips CDI, a device that quite frankly is not a game console, is included with consoles. Why? It's an edutainment device, a computer without a keyboard, yet we've classified it as a game console. Honestly, I think this happened simply because it has Mario and Zelda games for it. The Atari 5200 is a console that was meant to succeed the Atari 2600. It uses hardware very similar to Atari's 8-bit computer platform. Atari flexed the idea again later with the release of the XEGS, a system that would run Atari 8-bit computer cartridges. You can literally place an Atari 8-bit computer cartridge in the XEGS and run the game. So an 8-bit computer system that was conceived in the 70s and evolved in the 80s resulted in two spin-off consoles. Each is in a different console generation, and that very computer family they are based upon is not even part of this list of generations at all. It seems to me that Atari system genealogy should be present if you're going to list various systems by generations, but it most definitely is not. If this list is meant to have anything to do with video games, the absence of the Atari 8-bit computer platform is a glaring omission, and that is just one example. Why should we be more interested in a system of classification that shows the NES and Sega Master System competed against each other, rather than something that better relates the hardware? Sure, the time of release is one angle for history and content creation, but to me it makes more sense to classify in a way that better illustrates a hardware relationship. Take the connection between the Sega SG-1000, Mark III, Master System, the MSX, and the ColecoVision. There is both hardware relevance and history here. If you're a retro game enthusiast and don't know about this relationship, this is an example of our current classification system failing you. And if it really does come down to release dates and consoles alone, if that's all we are going to use in order to keep it simple, the current breakdown still has gaps in it. Overlap happens on a per-console basis. People compare the 8-bit 3rd gen consoles to each other, and they compare the 16-bit 4th gen consoles to each other. Content creators love these comparisons because the system's bits match up. They share generations. Do you know one pivotal moment that occurred during the overlap of these two generations? Super Mario Bros. 3. An 8-bit NES game released after Sega's 16-bit system, a game that sold quite well and possibly had a profound effect on Sega Genesis sales in North America. That is history, and is missing in this grouping. The Genesis competed against the NES for a few years. During this time, there was no Super Nintendo, and there was no Sonic the Hedgehog. Sports titles and electronic arts were huge on the Genesis in America, enough to define an era. My point doesn't concern Mario 3's level of impact on the market, competition of consoles at retail, or a boom of sports titles in the life of the Genesis, but rather the fact that any short-term historical impact that came from these events is completely lost in a list that is allegedly based on retail history. We shouldn't have gaps or inferred bridges if timeline of release is the preferred method of classification. Wikipedia content is created from user discussion, and we've shrugged our shoulders and said, well, these generations work, I guess. I don't care, I don't use them anyway. The point of classification is not to have an easy way to declare your favorite era of consoles. If we are going to bother to classify these systems, the results should be useful. As someone that values computer games, and console games, and arcade games, I feel like the current system is uninspired, limited, and borderline useless. I expect more. How about you? Thanks for watching.